I'd just like to share a little bit today about the wonderful relationship that God has for each and every one of us. And by the way, it's not just going to church. Because I remember when I was an old young man growing up, my mom, she used to take me to church every once in a while, you know, and tell me, you know, you should be good and you need to go to church and, you know, God loves you and he died on the cross for your sins and, and all this. See, I knew all that. But as I was growing up, you know, there's certain stages we go through, like when you're a teenager, there's a little rebellion in you. And I remember going to a Bible study, and the teacher had said something that I didn't agree with completely. And I was, you know, just a normal teenager. I don't believe with that. And uh, he, he was Irish. And he got so excited and mad, he, he started to swing on me. And then he stopped and after and that was all there was, too. That was my religious life. I mean, if this is what religion is all about and church theosity, man, I don't want no part of this. So I went on, you know, and every once in a while I'd appease my mom. I'd go to church with her. But, you know, I mean, I was done with the religion. That, that, that just didn't people, you know, listening to people and following them. But then all of a sudden I got, my life got to be a mess. I mean, really, really, really a mess. And I was looking in different places for the answers. And I got into self-help, I got into metaphysics, and, and on and on and on. And one day, as I was really involved in metaphysics, I read in the newspaper that there's a white light healing service in a motel in Scottsdale. So I went thinking, this was, man, this is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn more about, you know, life itself and, and hearing from the Nirvana and on and on and on. And finally, it was a church service. And I thought, preacher, oh, Lord's sakes. But to make a long story short, I saw something in people I'd never seen before. It was a radiance. What I was looking for, I saw in them. Just the simplicity of peace. Seemed like they had it. And the joy, you could, and it radiated on their face. So that's the night I got saved. And God turned me around. And I just, now I think about what happened to the Apostle Paul. He was hell-bent, the Apostle Paul was, on destroying the church. He had letters to go to Damascus and throw people in prisons and jails and stop them from this, the, the way, which was Jesus' his teachings in those days. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what happened to me. When Paul got touched by God, he was so changed. He became a new creature. He was going one direction just about as hard as you could go. And when God got a hold of him, God turned him around and sent him in the other direction. Because he said to Paul, he says, what are you doing? Why, why are you kicking against the goads? In other words, why aren't you listening to me? And Paul says, because he had such a touch from God. And by the way, I pray many of you that, are, that see this video, that you'll let God touch you also, just like he did the Apostle Paul, just like he, he did me. I was going hell-bent on my own way, just like the Apostle Paul was, not to the extent he was. I mean, he was unbelievable. But when he got touched, he got changed, he got turned around. He was no longer the same person. He was a brand new person in Christ. And he was persecuting the church, and now he's probably one of the greatest advocates the church ever had. And, you know, that's kind of, I was running. I don't want nothing to do with people. I don't want nothing to do with church. I don't want nothing. But when God got a hold of me and changed me, I realized it was a relationship with him. Now, something happened to me that I pray that it would happen to other people that get saved. And you say, well, what is that? When I got saved, and I didn't even realize this, it came automatically. Everybody, all my friends, I told them what happened to me. My life was changed by Jesus Christ. He gave me a new heart. He gave me a new mind. He gave me a new purpose. And I was sharing that with them. And then all of a sudden I realized, hey, He's chosen and called me to go out and witness to other people. It was an automatic thing. I didn't even think about it. And then I look in the Bible, and in uh, Matthew 4.17, it talks about repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the first thing he talked about, Jesus, when he started preaching. The very next thing he says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And here's what I don't understand about the church. When I became a Christian, he put this desire in my heart to follow him. And I said, yes, Lord, my life is such a mess. Whatever you want me to do, if I know it's you, you just show me, I'll do it. And it automatically happened that I was, 
had a desire to just tell other people about Jesus. And the next thing you know, I'm out in the streets. I'm preaching on the streets and I'm ministering to people. I got a job, which I, I wasn't really working before because I was trying to develop this metaphysical, intellectual, however you want to self-help growth program. But when I became a Christian, I got a job. And I got a job in down in the southern part of Phoenix, right by the railroad tracks where there's a lot of, in those days, winos. And they were out, I was out talking to them all day and I was telling them about Jesus. And the next thing you know, I'm preaching on the streets down there, telling people about Jesus because automatically I thought this is the way it, the way it is. When, you know, when you're, you're a teenager and you grow up, and we, not too long ago, we had an interview about Journey and JC, and God put a desire in their heart to, to get married. Well, it's just an automatic desire that God puts in there because that's His will. And so the, the desire He put in my heart, which is a natural thing, is to go and preach the Word to every creature. So I'm down there preaching t- to these guys, and I don't know a whole lot about anything. I've never been to seminary. I, I, didn't, I, I started reading the Bible, and I just started to grow, and I was very immature. But, you know, one thing I knew, that I was lost. When I turned my life over to God, He gave me that new heart, that new mind, that new passion, that desire to want to serve Him. And that was to, sh- to share this message with other people. And sure enough, here I'm praying with other people, and you know, I realized that that's not enough because they go right back out and do the same thing over. See, when I got saved, all I had to do was pray this prayer. And I thought that's all anybody else had to do because when I prayed the prayer, something got a hold of me and, and completely changed me. But after I, I became this Christian, I'm out preaching to other people. I thought that's all I had to do with them. And I prayed with many, many people and, and I could feel them accepting it. Uh, but they'd go right back out in the street because they were homeless and many of them, like I said before, were winos and, you know, what do you do with them? Where do you go? And all of a sudden it hit me, you got to get them off the street. So I got, you know, found houses and everything to put, to put them in and next thing you know, some of them were going to jail, go to visit the jail and something happened. You know, when I went to jail, the first thing I asked the guy, I said, hey, is there a service here in jail? He says, well, yes and no. And I said, well, wait a minute. This would be a perfect time. You got a captive audience. It just hit me. If, you preach, if, you, if I could get the preaching here, they have to listen to me. That uh, out in the street, sometimes they wouldn't listen. But this is what I used to do when I went out in the street. Sometimes they listened, sometimes they wouldn't. And I remember one day, I saw a dear old lady, that, man, she could cook. You know, I said, you know what? I bet you if I got her to cook some food and I took it out in the street, those people are going to listen. If they're going to eat that food, they're going to have to listen. And sure enough, they did. So I went to jail. I said, you know what? This is a captive audience. How can we, how can we get a service here in jail? Went to the chaplain and through it all, it took a little, you know, time and everything else. We got a, we got a service in jail. And then it was just really just that same desire was just to minister to people. And then I went around and found other people in the little church I was going to that also had the same desire because God put that desire in their heart, just like he put it in my heart. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And he's talking to Peter and the fishermen when he said that. They were fishing for fish. Now they're going to be fishers for men. So what he's calling me is, I was lost. Spirit got a hold of me. Now he's, I want you to go out and share with other people. And sure enough, by just following the plan of God, that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what I believe he's called the church to do. Now, if you're listening to this little message and you claim to be a Christian, will you let God have his way, truly, truly have his way? And what will happen is he'll put this desire in your heart because if you're going to follow him, it's an automatic thing. And I found out there's nothing better, nothing better than doing the will of God. See, that's what he says, too. If we'll put him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, he'll meet our needs. But if we, we've got to put him first, though. And doesn't that make a whole lot of sense? Don't you want to put God first? Not, not you. Oh, God, give me this, give me this, and then I'll go to church, or I'll do this, I'll do that. No. God, what do you want me to do? Follow you, 
And then by doing, following you, you put a passion in my heart to go out and minister to people. Now that I'm doing that, and the other things that I need that you know I even want, you know more about what I need and what I want, really, that's going to satisfy me than I do. So by doing, following him, that's exactly what happened. He's meeting my needs. I mean, I got this, this job I got. I lasted for 10 years. In fact, it was a day labor job. It's, it's amazing how God works. In the meantime, well, I'm in this day labor job, I go into the boss and ask him if he was a Christian. And he said at one time he was and he backslid. And I prayed with him and he accepted the Lord. And as soon as I walked out the door, God put it in my heart, go back and talk to him and tell him you want to feel, you want to pray for him that he get filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues, the Spirit of God gave him others. And sure enough, I went right back in there. He looked at me and said, what, what, what? You know, he's the boss. I'm, I'm just a, working for him. And sure enough, I prayed for him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't too much long later, two, a few days later, he says, well, I want to take you out. I want to buy you something. And I says, okay, Jim. So I got my work clothes on. He's taking me out to lunch. He says, we're going to go into this department store over here. He says, I'm going to buy you a grill. I said, Jim, you're going to buy me a grill? He said, yes, because when you do those outreaches, and you've asked me to make sandwiches for, my wife and I make sandwiches for you, we were doing that. And I got the, he, Jim says, I got the thinking, if I get you a grill, we can go out there and cook hot dogs. I don't have to make any sandwiches anymore. Now, this is so amazing because we've been doing outreaches for 40 years. And a lot of the times we do these outreaches, we cook, cook hot dogs. And it all came through this man that was my boss, that was a backslidden Christian. And by me going in and sharing with him what God put in my heart, he really got behind us. He's the one that helped. He was a lawyer. He's the one that helped us get our corporation started. And he, he supported us for many, 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 many years. He was behind us. He was on our board. And as the years went by, you know, the God took him home. But, you know, the whole thing is, is just letting God develop in you the passion to do his will, which is to follow him and he'll use us to go in all the world and preach this wonderful good news, this gospel, because that's what he says, going all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. Now, my question is, how could we go to church, claim to be Christians, and ignore that? Because the first thing he said was repent. The very next thing he says is, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. How do we bypass that? I, I don't know. But I can see by just doing what God put in my heart to do, Day after day, going back out in the streets, just about every day, ministering to people. When they go to, when he went to jail, we started service in jail. The same guy went to prison. We got services in prison. In fact, one of the man, tremendous, tremendous. When he, his name is Randy, Pastor Randy Sampson. When he was in prison, I got a chance to meet him, and he just loved the Lord, and God was developing him. He was a chaplain's clerk for as, as long as you could be. And then they have to set him back a little bit because so, you know, he, I mean, he just he couldn't do it for only so long. Then he, they put him back in it and he got a couple degrees in there. He learned Latin and uh, Hebrew. And just to see what God has been able to do with his life. You know, one of the exciting things, just following God and Randy, he spent a lot of years in prison. He used to have a dear, sweet young lady who come out and visit him. And in those days, we had services in prison, which we got by this one guy, remember, priest on the street, go to jail, meet him in jail, get a service there. He goes to prison, go to prison, meet him out there at prison, start service out there. Then we meet Randy, and, this, and then we would have services out there. And in those days, you could, they, the inmates could have their family come out to the services. So Randy had this one young lady come out, and she would come out every Sunday. And after, I don't know how many years it was, finally, Randy is very intelligent. I said, Randy, for such an intelligent man, do you see what you have here, this sweet young lady? What do you think? You think it's time for you maybe to think it's time to get married? 
Because, see, that's part of what God's plan is. And next thing you know, I guess Randy thought, well, you know, I can't get married in prison. I got an opportunity to man manage him, marry him when he was in prison, him and his wife. And then, you know, on down the road, it was a few years later, then he got out of prison and he came to our church. And in fact, he's doing a, a wonderful job here at our church. Just to see what God is able to do when you get back to the simplicity of the gospel is following Jesus. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Then you go out and you see these things happen. And, you know, we've been, well, by just, just, just doing this, priest on the street, next thing you know, we've got buildings and churches and, and everything else. In fact, it's about time for us to move out of this one big building and we're looking forward to going someplace else to another big building, doing the same thing that God's called us to do is winning and building people to go out and do the same thing that God put in my heart and he put in everybody's heart when it's time for them to repent and get saved and then follow him and he makes us fishers of men. And that's what he says to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And by the way, he sends us to all the world and preach the gospel. So what am I saying? I'm just thinking about people like Randy that spend all, all these years, many, many, many years just growing, going, doing the same thing, involved in this ministry that's going in all the world and preach the gospel. So the question is, are you willing to listen to what the Holy Spirit has called you to do? Are you willing to say, okay, God, your will, not my will? By the way, that's what salvation is all about, giving your life to Christ. Jesus gave his life for us when he died on the cross. And now he puts a desire in our heart. And by the way, you can't come to him unless he puts this desire for us to want to do his will. And to do his will is to follow him, submit to him, allow him to rule and reign in your life and develop you into what he wants you to be. And one of the things he wants you to be is a soul winner, winning people to the Lord. And the rest will take care of itself. The things we need, he'll give us what we need. And that's what's exciting. And I'm going to tell you what, the most exciting thing to me is after I've been doing this now for about 45 years, and there's the excitement that's still in me, and I'm getting pretty old. In a few months, I'll be 80 years old. There's still an excitement in me like there was when I first got saved to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because I can see God working in people. I know there's a lot of struggles and battles coming against us. But one thing I know, if God's for us, who can be against us? So when he put in our heart to follow him, he's going to make us fishers and men. It's exciting. It never gets for me. It's never got old. I've never got bored doing it. And it drives me. And along the way, too, I picked up a dear lady, a wife, which I had divorced before I was a Christian, and he put us back together, and we're workers together with him. And I'm looking forward for the two of us just going on and proclaiming this wonderful gospel to the lost and dying world. God bless you.